Hello beautiful souls, Brittany Shawley here and today I am sharing this video for the amazing virtual conference Miracle Share and we are discussing specifically awakening through the workbook. And so as always I asked our beloved brother and teacher and friend Jesus what lesson it is that would be most helpful for me to discuss um, during this um, virtual conference and the guidance that was given me was to open up to lesson 76 I am under no laws but God's and as I inquired more as to why this would be the most helpful lesson of the 365 that are there he said because this is what I'm experiencing at this exact time and as us new course students or seasoned course students um, you know look at this lesson it is quite clear that Jesus is reminding us that we are under no laws but God's. There are no laws in this world that we need to abide by, that we are affected by, that need to be our priority in our mind, that need to um, you know, run the way we live life and look at life. Um, Jesus is reminding us that the laws of God are all powerful, all inclusive, all mighty, um, all loving, and will totally, completely, and entirely take care of us and everyone who's included in that us in our life. And I know for both Tom and I, you know, for the last five years, we have been living according to this truth. I am under no laws but God's. I gave up my personal practice as, as a coach um, that, um, you know, I, I was helping people, you know, understand the power of their mind through hypnosis and healing and later through the of Course in Miracles. And I literally gave that up because I realized that there was a part of my mind that was using it to gain, that was using it to get. And God's laws are only giving. They never, ever, ever, ever take. And even though we're living in this world, it looks like, you know, well, if I'm still being of service and I'm still helping my brothers, but that's asking for money, that's this reciprocal exchange. But within this lesson, we are told that there is no reciprocity in the laws of God. There is no exchange in the laws of God. There is only giving. But the amazing, beautiful thing is that when we give, we will receive automatically. So we don't have to concern ourselves with the receiving. It doesn't mean you're not going to receive. It doesn't mean you're going to deplete yourself from giving. That's the wrong way of looking at what giving means. Giving is to receive. They are one and the same. But you don't have to consciously think about what you're going to get from it, how you're going to receive from it, what you're going to do to make sure that you're personally taken care of. And so when I was presented with the option five years ago of if I was going to take this thought as wholly true for myself or not, I really had to almost think about what me, Brittany, thought that she was sacrificing, what I thought that I would be losing if I accepted this thought as wholly true. I'm under no laws but God's. And I started to see that the things that I might perceive myself to be sacrificing all had to do with the physical body, all had to do with personal preferences. The idea of, oh, I might lose my apartment. I won't be able to afford, you know, be living in my apartment anymore. So I'm going to have to give it up. You know, the thoughts of like, okay, well, if I don't focus on healthy eating and like eating like high nutrition and working out every day and, you know, having this, you know, regime of, you know, focusing on making sure my body's healthy, um, then I might get fat. You know, like that's a sacrifice to the mind of Brittany. Um, I, I really had to look at, okay, well, if I let go of these things of the world, the typical job, et cetera, et cetera, how are people going to look at me? What are people going to think of me? You know, um, so I had to examine my own mind and my own thinking around this idea of sacrifice because to the ego, if you were to accept the laws of God and only the laws of God to the ego, you're going to be sacrificing something. There's always some loss that is entailed through the eyes of the ego. But once I almost used reason in my own mind and really started to question and look at those ideas that I thought that I would be um, um, sacrificing, losing, um, I realized how crazy that was. That that was my own mind putting my focus and my value in the things of this world. Now Jesus is very specific in this lesson that I think he even says it maybe in the first sentence. We have observed before how many senseless things have seemed to you to be salvation. 
You know, that's the thing. We think that we are saved if we get these particular vaccines, you know, to ward off death. We think we are saved by having piles and piles and piles of, of, of paper strips and metal discs, um, you know, saving for retirement, you know, paying off our debt, paying off our mortgage. You know, we're thinking like all of these things are what is going to save us. These are all the things that will make us and allow us the opportunity to exist and live in this world. But Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. You don't need all this money and all the stuff saved up for you to ensure that you have a meal. Right? We, if we are sustained, like lesson 50 says, I am sustained by the love of God. If that is wholly true, if I am sustained by the love of God, that means that my body, my being, those that are around me are sustained by the love of God. If I'm trying to... Um, make a life for myself by providing for myself and working every day all hard and not really enjoying what I'm doing but doing it because I think that I have to make this money and I have to keep this roof over my head and I have to pay all these bills and do all these things and keep life on my shoulders that is is based on the idea of fear you're afraid you're going to lose something you're afraid that God's not going to provide you're afraid that you know you can't trust God wholly and completely because all these things might fall away and what my experience was is that indeed I ended up, you know, um, leaving my apartment. Um, but that was because I, it was time for me to almost like step into experiencing relationships instead of trying to live life by myself alone. And what this also did is it allowed me to have the opportunity to trust that I am always going to be taken care of. I'm always going to be provided for. I will always have everything I need. And all I have to do is listen to the voice inside my mind, the Holy Spirit, the voice of reason, the voice for God, and let this voice be the leader in my life. And for the next five years, I did this for a bunch of months by myself. And then Tom joined me as he's been doing this for many, many years, even before I had the opportunity to do it by myself. And together we opened ourselves up to God and his plan and where shall he have us be. At this point, I'm often reminded of, you know, what Jesus did in, in his time. You know, like he told, you know, his apostles and he himself basically said, you know, go to whom will welcome you and leave where you're not welcome, right? And and I found that through this process that Tom and I were sent to all these different places where we were wholly and completely welcome and this would allow us the opportunity to experience miracles together. Like literal miracles, literal transformations of thought that would extend to the form and so we can experience these transformations of form together because we've changed our mind about what the form means to us. And so it was constantly this state of joy, you know, whether it was traveling around here in Canada, um, all the different parts of Canada, whether it was traveling around the States and California, um, we were literally sent. And what was beautiful is because I let go of this idea of providing for myself through my practice or any job of the world, I was able to witness how God works through our brothers to help support us and how God will provide you with exactly what you need at the exact same time that you need it. Like I can't even tell you how many times we'd randomly find $50 like in a pocket that literally could not have been there but because we need it. I can't tell you how many times we've looked into our bank account and all of a sudden there's a couple hundred dollars in there it's like where'd this come from thank you government of Canada you know like we have constantly had these experiences where we are provided with what we need and and ask Tom and anyone around I only make amazing incredible food because that is what I feel I can do as part of my mission to serve right is is to have this like healthy beautiful colorful um, incredible tasting food that I thoroughly enjoy making but now the intent isn't to have this healthy thin fit body it is for service right and and this has been a way for God to show me that I will be given everything to allow that to happen so it's not small potatoes that we eat like we literally enjoy the abundance that food has to offer in this world as one example of the the God's divine providence and that when we live according to his laws we are given everything and so this leads us back to God's laws God's laws are giving all giving there's not an idea of taking so since I and Tom have devoted our life to service to giving to God to creating we have been given everything back in return 
And I think in part why this lesson was an important one to bring up at this time is because during this process of flying by the seat of our fit pants, trusting God's will and only God's will and fulfilling God's laws and only God's laws and not focusing on the laws of the world, we have been in a state of absolute joy. We've had our experiences come up that allow the hidden subconscious thoughts of ego to be undone, but they're brought up for correction to be undone and then they don't repeat. Like these lessons do not repeat in our relationships in our life because when they are triggered and they're brought up, they're undone. And this is what we're learning to do through the practical application of these specific lessons is that when we get triggered in our life, when we get, you know, become fearful about even the idea of contemplating letting go of the laws of this world, um, we can apply forgiveness to it. We can apply the correction, the atonement to it. And these lessons teach us how to do that each and every single day. And so since we've been in this state of joy, allowing that to be the anchor of knowing we are doing exactly what we're supposed to do and, and continuing to watch the unfoldment of, of life happen perfectly and carry us everywhere we need to be through that process, it was like, okay, you can do this beautifully by yourself. You can do this beautifully together. But what happens if we throw something else in the bunch? Boom. Tom and I get pregnant. And so we are now at the point where we have this beautiful little baby who is 10 weeks today. Um, and she has graced us um, with her presence in our life. And this really allowed us to question these ideas. I'm under no laws but God's. Okay, this could be true with you and Tom alone. Is it still true when you have Ella here? And yes, I can say it's still true when you have Ella here. I know that Five years ago when I let my life as Brittany made it go and I welcomed the life that God wills for me and I said yes wholly and completely to that my life has been on a constant acceleration towards the door of heaven and and allowing heaven to be actualized inside my mind and inside my life in order for it to be spread around the world because I've learned that that's the only thing that I want is is heaven on earth, this literal place of joy and happiness that all of us can share in together as we co-create a world of, of cooperation and, and you know, um, things that work for everyone. And so because of that, Ella coming on board was not this idea of sacrifice of, oh my God, now I'm going to be losing this lifestyle of flying by the seat of my pants. Now we have to become parents. No, no, what this was for me was more of a solidification that I am a child of God, that if I can trust God to take care of me and Tom, I could trust God to take care of Ella as well, because she is also a child of God as we are. And so this has allowed this idea of I am under no laws but God's to become even more integrated into the mind and into the heart. And so now every single day is given even more so to service and to giving and to bringing forward the creations that God has given us to give. And so I think I'm at a point where I want to read a little bit from this lesson and be able to speak of it from the perspective of experiencing it and how these particular lessons that Jesus speaks of in this one lesson um, arise for us to um, really, really learn really 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 learn like he doesn't just give us these thoughts in these 365 lessons to breeze over them um they are meant to evoke experience and change of mind about what life is for and about who my authority is and so so i'm just going to read it from the beginning we have observed before how many senseless things have seemed to you to be salvation each has imprisoned you with laws as senseless as itself. You are not bound by them. Yet to understand that this is so, you must first realize salvation lies not there. While you would seek for it in things that have no meaning, you bind yourself to laws that make no sense. Thus do you seek to prove salvation is where it is not. So this whole paragraph is reminding us that if we are believing in the laws of the world and the things that the world has set up, the things that we made in the world, then we are imprisoned. We are bound by them. 
And so of course we're going to spend our days to try and uphold these laws that we think that are true because we think that our salvation's in them. And if I let the laws of the world and the laws that man made go, then that's a fearful idea to the ego. It's like, well, then what then? I've lost my salvation. I've lost my power. I've lost my control. So he further says, Today we will be glad you cannot prove it. For if you could, you would forever seek where it is not and never find it. The idea for today tells you once again how simple is salvation. Look for it where it waits for you and there it will be found. Look nowhere else for it is nowhere else. So I think this is crucial. Jesus isn't saying, I'm not going to prove to you that the laws of the world aren't real. I can't prove that to you and I'm going to be glad I can't prove that to you. But what I can prove to you is what is real. And so if we seek for salvation where it is, which is in our mind, in our hearts, then we will find it. And it is that experience, right? Jesus even says, seek first the kingdom of heaven and all else will be added unto you. This is the same thing, just different words. If you seek for salvation where it is, you seek for the answer, for the truth, for the laws of God where they are. They will be recognized by us. They will be accepted by us. They will be seen by us. And we will know that it is true. And from that experience of what is true, it will trump everything else that is not true. And that's why I was able to make such a clear-cut decision five years ago, is because I was able to see the distinction between what is true and what is untrue by choosing what is true for myself, unequivocally. No compromise, no half seas, no one leg in, one leg out. All in. All in. And when we decide to be all in and look for it where it is, we found the kingdom of heaven. We can live in it and we can bring it here and follow those laws here. So he says, think of the freedom and the recognition that you are not bound by all the strange and twisted laws which you have set up to save you. You really think that you would starve unless you have a stack of green paper strips and piles of metal discs? You really think a small round pellet or some fluid pushed into your veins through a sharpened needle will ward off death. You really think you are alone unless another body is with you. It is insanity to think these things. You call them laws and put them under different names in a long catalog of rituals that have no use and serve no purpose. You think you must obey the laws of medicine, of economics, and of health. Protect the body and you will be saved. As I pause for a second, Jesus is being so direct. He's not beating around the bush. He is so direct and saying that if you believe in the laws of this world, that is insanity to think those things. He's not calling you or me insane. He's saying the thought system which believes in the laws of the world to be true and to have power is insane. And it's okay to recognize the ego as being insane because that's what it is. And it is the ego that made up the laws of man. And when we are believing in the laws of man, we're not believing in the laws of God. When we see the laws of man as being true, we're not seeing the laws of God as being true. And so this is where we are putting value in the meaningless. This is where we are putting salvation where it is not. And so he is telling us, and, and opening our eyes to look at these things when he says, um, you really think that if you do not have a stack of p green strips and metal discs, that you're going to starve. Like that is such a faulty conclusion that the mind of man has made, but believes so strongly in it. And once it starts to see the number in the bank account going down, they get afraid, they fear, they think of all the things they have to take care of and all the things they have to pay and all the things they have to do that they can't do and can't keep up and can't uphold if that number goes down. So your value is in that number. And I know that that's exactly what we got to experience, you know, this whole time and still are, that our safety is not in that number and how much we think we have. We will have exactly what we need and it will be given to us in a way that is needed. And if I'm called to go work somewhere, like I've been called to, you know, go help my dad so he doesn't get an audit for the business that he has and he's gonna pay me, you know, whatever, a hundred bucks a day to help file his files. And it's like, so if something presents itself like that to my life, yeah, sure. But to me, first and foremost, it's about the relationship, right? It's about the salvation that it's wanting to work itself out. It's not to get something. It's still to be there to serve the purpose. And if that is what, you know, is given, you know, at the time, sure, why not? But that's not the goal. That's not the want. That's not nothing. 
And I think a second big part of this is the idea of, you know, um, uh, you really think a small round pellet of s or some fluid pushed into your veins through a sharpened needle will ward off death. Ella is two months. We've had to make this decision of putting a vaccine in her or not. And we've really realized and learned through contemplation and prayer and asking that that is just a false idea of what the world has made up, that our solution to disease is a needle. At the time, sure, you know, that could be really, you know, helpful and beneficial for the world as a whole, but it's not focused on that purpose of helping anymore. It's literally now become something completely different. And so it allows us to question, like, who do I think I am? Am I this body that I think is going to die and that I have to protect it with my own man-made hands? Or am I a soul that God protects and takes care of? And because my mind is focused on God's laws and who I am truly, that I am completely unharmable. Like the Christ, the light is completely unharmable. There is nothing that can happen to me without my own consent. There is nothing that can happen to me without my own consent. That means disease. That means cancer. That means everything that, you know, physically could happen to me. Nothing happens without my own consent. And this is where our power is. And so to continue here. These are not laws, but madness. The body is endangered by the mind that hurts itself. Exactly. The body suffers that the mind will fail to see it is the victim of itself. The body suffering is a mask the mind holds up to hide what really suffers. It would not understand it is its own enemy, that it attacks itself and wants to die. It is from this your laws would save the body. It is for this you think you are a body. And that's exactly what I was saying. It is the mind that injures you. It is the mind that hurts you. It is the mind that creates sickness. It is the mind that makes these laws. And so when we recognize that we need not protect the body, but we need to change the mind, this is when we're put back into our place of power. This is when we're put back into the perfect alignment with God and who we are and the laws that we are here to bring forward, which are God's. And so this allows us to remember, who am I? Who do I think I am? And where does protection come from? Where does protection come from? So I'm going to skip a little bit over here. And I'm going to go down on the second page where it begins saying, there are no laws but God's. There are no laws but God's. Dismiss all foolish magical beliefs today and hold your mind in silent readiness to hear the voice that speaks the truth to you. You will be listening to one who says there is no loss under the laws of God. There is no loss, no sacrifice under the laws of God. Payment is neither given nor received. Exchange cannot be made. There is no substitutes and nothing is replaced by something else. God's laws forever give and never take. This is exactly what I was saying at the beginning of the discussion today. That there really is no loss in following the laws of God. And there's no exchange that needs to be made. No substitutes and nothing to be replaced by something else. God's laws forever give and never take. And if we are created in God's image and likeness, we will give and we will create as God does. And so we can trust that when we let go of what we think we have to do in the world and open to what God has given us to fulfill in this world, then we will literally be able to fulfill our function here in joy. We will be able to create with God and with our brothers and sisters in joy. We will be able to leave the fear behind and literally know that His laws have the power. I can give everything to have. Give all to all. To have all. Give all to all. There is no word of take in there. But the, 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 the law of giving is receiving they are the same so when your mind lets go of the idea of loss and lets go of the idea of sacrifice you will be able to celebrate that god's laws are true you will be able to accept them that god's laws are true and then you will be able to extend them and experience them every single day and literally be in such a state of gratitude 
that it is so strong and so palpable that everyone in your life will feel it and everyone in your life will come to you and ask you about it so that you can continue to offer God's will. You continue to offer God's grace. You continue to offer God's peace and happiness and trust in his laws and guess what you will experience? His peace, his love, his happiness because that is what you're giving. And there's no opposite to this. So I'll just keep going and grab little Ella here. All right. She's awake. Hear him who tells you this, and realize how foolish are the laws you thought upheld the world you thought you saw. Then listen further. He will tell you more about the love your father has for you, about the endless joy he offers you, about his yearning for his only son, created as his channel for creation, denied to him by his belief in hell. Let us today open God's channel to him and let his will extend through us to him. Thus is creation endlessly increased. His voice will speak of this to us as well as of the joys of heaven, which his laws keep limitless forever. We will repeat today's idea until we have listened and understood there are no laws but God's. Then we will tell ourselves as a dedication with which the practice period concludes, I am under no laws but God's. And how beautiful is this? How could we want to experience anything else but this? Jesus isn't saying, listen to me as you are reading it in words in the A Course in Miracles. He's saying, listen to the inner voice that will speak to you and tell you this is true. I don't want you to take what I say as true. I've listened to the voice within and I know it's true from personal experience. But this is something that you must also do. And Jesus says that when you listen within, not only will you recognize that the laws of God are what are true and what we can trust and what we can live by, he also says that you will hear of the love your Father has for you and the endless joy he offers you and about his yearning for his only Son created as his channel for creation denied to him by his belief in hell. Now what is hell? Hell is the laws of this world and being bound to them. What is hell? The thought that you have to uphold those laws and let your day be filled with everything trying to fulfill those laws. That's hell. And your belief in hell is obscuring to you the light of heaven. The light of heaven that is present for you to experience every single day. And it will include taking care of your children. It will include taking care of you. It will include taking care of everything because protection is in God's laws. Protection is in God and us being created in his image and likeness. It is not in this world or in anyone in this world or in any law of this world. And I promise you, when you let go of the things of this world, even from your own thinking, and then whatever happens to it and form after happens to it, but when you let go of the things of this world and the laws of this world, it will be replaced by the limitless gifts the limitless power, the limitless creation and joy of God, and you will be given your function here that will help to contribute to bringing peace on earth, to bringing heaven on earth, and you will be in the center of that peace in heaven, and you will experience that peace in heaven every day, and I promise you, this is what we value. This is what we value. And so, in final words here, I am under no laws but God's. And in this idea, it is our acknowledgement that God is our Father and that His Son is saved. We are saved. We are already saved. And by listening and learning to this idea that I am under no laws but God's, we experience that is so. And we don't have to go around trying to take care of it of ourselves alone. There is a power here we can bow down to and welcome and be grateful that we are one with it. And so that is it. I am under no laws but God's. You are under no laws but God's. We are under no laws but God's. And we are here to experience the blessings that come from this. Right, Ella Joy? Yes. <laughs> blessings to us all. Bye. I love you. God bless you.